<laughs> hey there, all my popcorn peeps. Magic Man Rusty here. Welcome to this live streaming episode of the Magnificent Seven. Believe it or not, Popcon Indie celebrating its seventh anniversary, and we are spending seven minutes with members of our greater Popcon family. And joining us in the Popcon crowd tonight, one of our many virtual Popcon 2020 special guests, a woman who is a true Renaissance lady of entertainment. I'm your host, Rusty Emmerman, and our Magnificent Seven with Elizabeth Maxwell begins right now. So, how are things in Texas? Uh, you know, they're a little crazy right now, but um, I'm just trying to stay inside as much as possible and avoid it all. We are so <laughs> excited that you're going to be with us for a pop, virtual PopCon 2020. Sorry you couldn't be Me here too. in Indiana because I, you know, I know that everybody from Texas, one of their big goals in life is to get to Indiana. And I'm but next time, perhaps. So I love speaking, Indianapolis, so I can't wait. Well, good. Thank you. Uh, nice to hear that. So speaking of uh, uh, goals, bucket list. Do you have anything interesting on your bucket list? Ooh, um, oh, that is a good question. Uh, I want to learn how to scuba dive. Interesting. Mm -hmm. How about skydive? Any desire to do that? I actually almost got my, uh, the first, uh, I forget what it's called, but there's like degrees of skydiving licenses You're, that you can get. And I yeah. almost got my first one, but I was in my like mid twenties and I ran out of money. Like I was two, I was two jumps away from, from getting, completing it. Getting your A license. Yes, thank you. I was like, I want to say it's a letter, but yeah, it yeah. is. It's the A license. Well, I, I jumped for many times, and the old joke was, uh, how, you know, how much does it cost to skydive? And the answer is about 150 bucks for your first jump, then half your paycheck for the rest of your life. So I know exactly what I mean. It's easy to run under there. And crazy story, Rusty. Yeah. My second solo jump ever. My main shoot failed. You had a reserve ride. Okay, now we're getting kind of eclectic here. You had a reserve ride on your second solo jump. Uh huh. Do you know how statistically improbable? That is? No, but I definitely didn't know enough to be as terrified as I should have been. <laughs> well, that's good. You had plenty of time to be terrified later when you're sitting in the drop zone and and telling stories. But see, now you've got a great story to tell. I I want to hear more exactly. about that. We are, by the way, you're going to be joining us for a panel. On Friday the 10th at 6 p.m., you and Jason and, and Leah will be there. I'll be hosting that. So I'm going to make sure that you tell this death-defying skydiving story then in more detail. All right. More. I'm down. I want to hear it. Do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents? Um, I've got a really good short-term memory that has kind of served me really well as an actor um, and also uh, makes it seem like I remember people better than I do. <laughs> Okay. Oftentimes. So when you say short term, do you mean like a couple minutes, a couple days? What, what are we? Couple talking about? Couple minutes. A couple more minutes. More so, a couple minutes. Yeah. You can look at something, remember for a couple minutes, and it's gone forever. You can like, like, uh, uh, with Dory, right? In uh, yeah. Finding Nemo, right? Okay. Good. Yeah. What is uh? So we talked about your bucket list. What what secret videos do you like to watch on YouTube? Is there some secret little pleasure you go to? Cat videos or something? I, I don't watch a lot of YouTube, but I, and I've never been much of a reality TV person, but since the whole pandemic has happened, yeah. um, I've been watching a lot of kind of like trash dating reality TV. I think just because I miss human interaction so much. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting it virtually through other people's misery. Uh huh. So what is, okay. So that opens up some questions. What is the worst first date ever? that I've had? Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I, he was a very sweet boy, uh -huh. but I went out on a date with um, an actor that I met on set in LA. Very good looking, very sweet. Turns out really thrifty. Um, <laughs> we went out to dinner and he basically insisted on paying for dinner, but mm -hmm. wouldn't let me buy a drink like a glass of wine or anything like that, and insisted that we share an entree. Insisted? Uh-huh, because he felt like the portions in restaurants were too large, and it just made fiscal sense for us to get one entree and share it. Okay. Was he counting dollars or counting calories? Dollars, Okay. Actually. Okay, all right. I would have almost understood the calories more in L.A. Yeah. Right, um, right. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Oh, that's weird. Okay. So have you ever been on a blind date? 15% and that was kind of like the clincher. <laughs> so that was it. You were done then. Mm -hmm. So have you ever been on a blind date? You ever made that mistake? I mean, ever had that joy? 
I have not actually. I've never been very open to my friends setting me up because oftentimes I have not thought my friends have had the best taste in men. <laughs> well, you're you're a smart lady then. All right. How about tattoos? Any tattoos? No tattoos. Yeah. I I'm not adverse to them, but I've just never been able to think of something that I wanted on my body for my whole life. So yeah, no, you, that's a that's a good point. You got to make that decision. You probably if you if you've jumped before and almost got your A license, you knew a lot of people that got parachute tattoos, and I, I, I never did that either because you never know if you're going to do that the rest of your life. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. As a child, what was your favorite toy? I loved paper dolls. Wow really old school. I know I'm, I'm honestly couldn't tell you why I liked them more than I liked three dimensional dolls, but I was obsessed with paper dolls. Like we traveled a lot when I was a kid and every like new state or new city that we would go to, I would always search for unique paper dolls from that area. Amazing. Yes. That is kind of old school, but but very quaint in its in simplicity. All right, so you're my a poor mom player. usually had to cut them out though. Oh, she did. Yeah. Well, they have the adults have steady hands. What kind of kickboxing do you do? I read you're a kickboxer. What style is it? Taekwondo? Is it? You know, honestly, I'm I'm not sure if they've ever specified. Um, I take well, I was taking kickboxing at an MMA gym. Um, and so they never really got specific with whether it was a certain style. We would we hold the Thai. Um, the the Thai, God, I my brain Friday, uh, <laughs> the big Thai blocks. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Sure. Hold with those. So we we actually like do contact kicking instead of kicking into a um, a, a punching bag. I that, which, yeah, which I prefer because I feel like you get a really good workout when you're holding as well as when you're That's actually right. um, kicking and attacking. But yeah, they just always say kickboxing. They've never said whether it's derivative of a certain style and uh, also i hear that you're a huge john carpenter fan what is if you, what you go what's your go-to quintessential john carpenter movie big trouble in little china oh Carrasso, that's great and that's not that's not typical john carpenter either good for you i thought you were going to say the thing or the fog no well good Which and I what, love. Is, what is it about carpenter's style that you uh, think is unique i I always just appreciated the type of tension that he builds and um, the actors that he selects. I mean, yeah. I just, I'm a huge Kurt Russell fan. Um, and I've always enjoyed the the humor that gets brought into his movies too, because I think genre films kind of have to know um, either to take themselves dead seriously, which often doesn't work super well, um, I like it better when they tend to poke a little, like add a little fun into the mix and, sure. you know, kind of sure. take some well, of the you, hot you air out of themselves. Tension, a little release. Tension, a little mm -hmm. release. You're exactly right. All right. So to kind of refresh, well, you're just such a delightful guest. You oh, are going to be doing a panel. I'm going to be hosting it with uh, Jason, Leah, and you. That's going to be at 6 p.m. on Friday the 10th. And then immediately after, you have a meet and greet, virtual meet and greet. Fans can spend about three minutes virtually with you from uh, 7 to 9. And if the fans want to do this, and why wouldn't they? They need to run because your dance card is getting full. That's <laughs> popcon.us. More information there. I cannot wait to see you for Virtual PopCon 2020. Thank you for being such me a great too. guest. Oh, right. thank you so much for having me. I can't wait. And I look forward to it. The the one-on-ones are some of my favorite parts of these virtual cons. So oh, I love great. connecting well, with you guys that way. I will see you then. Until next time, PopCon peeps, live long and prosper.